Unprecedented times call for unprecedented measures, and we are certainly living in unprecedented times, as governments introduce various lockdowns really all throughout the Western world and in other countries that effectively grinds the economy to a halt, through no fault of those workers who are going to be told, no, you can't go to your jobs, you can't do the things that allow you to feed your family and to pay your rent. If there is nothing done to intervene, we will have cascading economic effects that are disastrous for many, many people. Hence why you see governments of all political stripes introducing some form of bailout package, stimulus package. I don't even want to know what to call this, because this is very different than it was, say, in 2008. So while we can nitpick about the various things Justin Trudeau and the government in Canada have introduced, there is broad uh, cross-partisan support for this to some degree or another. But here's the catch. What happens when the coronavirus is gone, when this is all behind us? Hopefully sooner than later, but who knows how many months that will be. What happens to those programs, to those initiatives that have been announced and introduced? When do you wind them down? Do you get rid of them when just all the restrictions are over and all the lockdowns are lifted? Well, hold on, there will be some industries that you've been underwriting that just don't go back to their same normal. Do you say, well, too bad, let's cut out the funding then? Do you wait until, say, the markets are back to where they were before they took their hit with the coronavirus? Okay, but whatever. what if they never get back to those actual levels? When do you do this? And here's the thing. There's going to be a number of voices out there who say, don't get rid of them. Keep them as is. Keep these things that are basically equivalent to national guaranteed income cash transfers to many different individuals based on where they're at in their incomes and so forth. And there's a term for that. It's called socialism. You can go even beyond that. Now, right now, it doesn't look like that to us because we agree that something like this is needed, and it is. And you're seeing that bipartisan, cross-partisan support. But I guarantee you in the coming months, whenever it is six months, nine months, 18 months from now, there's going to be a great debate in all the parliaments, in Congress, in places all across the world talking about these measures. Because there are socialists out there who have been calling for these very things to be introduced before there was a coronavirus. Immaterial of that, they want this stuff in society, regardless of what's going on. This is going to be one of the long-term consequences of this virus, the fact that the state has suddenly quickly ballooned, and I don't believe it's going to constrict at the same speed and to the same degree that it ballooned. What happens next? And that's going to be something to keep an eye on. That's going to be a battle that will be fought by those individuals who well, are pro-socialists and those who are not gear up for it, folks, because I guarantee you that debate, that battle will be coming.